Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. We have a lot of content for MSPs, and in today's video, it's going to be part of a little mini series I'm creating for device configuration profiles for iOS. And in today's video, I wanted to show you guys the device features configuration profile. I didn't want to break these up because the restrictions profile is quite lengthy and the amount of settings that you can go through, which I'll be covering. So I wanted to make this a little bit more consumable. Uh, getting into it here, the device features, if you haven't looked into my other videos about enrollment methods for iOS, I would highly encourage you to do so. The different enrollment methods I will point out here in the sense of the profile configurations that you can actually deploy to certain deployment types, but I would highly encourage you, if you're not familiar with it already, to look up the enrollment types for iOS in Intune. So getting into it here, I'm in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center and I'm in the configuration profiles. I've already pre-made these three here just to show you what it looks like from an end user experience for some of the settings. But I'm gonna be going through the device features section here. You can come into the configuration profile on iOS and you can select iOS iPad if you're already on that page. And you have your list here of tons of different configuration profiles of which you can push out. Again, the scope of this video is going to be device features. So we're gonna start there. And since I already created it, I'm going to pop in there just to show you my pre-existing settings. This will be the same blade and information that you see as well too. So looking at it here, before we get into everything here, I just want to mention there's only two settings available within this entire list that are available for BYOD devices, not ones that are automated through the automated device enrollment program with Apple Business Manager or Apple School Manager. Those two settings are AirPrint and single sign-on app extension. And so if you do not have anything configured here or do not care about those two features and you're only managing BYOD devices, this may be not something that you even want to create. So I just wanted to point that out first here. But while we go through it here, you'll notice that you have this messaging up at the top of each setting as we go through, which defines what enrollment method is supported with a particular setting. So for this one, it's basically saying all enrollment types are supported, BYOD devices, devices in ABM, devices in Apple School Manager, or formerly known as DEP, the Automated Device Enrollment Program. So definitely pay attention to that. And if you hover over some of the icons, it will tell you like this, for instance, it can tell you sometimes what uh, the supported OS version is, the minimum supported OS version. It's all in Microsoft's documentation too if you wanted to look a little bit more detail. So with this one, the first one here, AirPrint, simply giving you the ability to add air printers into the uh, iOS device pre-configured there so they don't have to do it automatically. You can set up the IP address, path, port, and TLS settings here. You can import multiple air printers here as well too if you want to do it in bulk. This way it's already pre-configured when the person has their device there. You don't have to worry about manually configuring that they automatically know where they're gonna be printing to. Uh, next one here, home screen layout. You can define the dock and the pages on the iOS device, iPhone, iPad. This is strictly for automated device enrollment only. Does not work for BYOD devices that use the company portal app to install that. So you can define what applications are on the dock. And those are usually like the four on the iOS device or the multiple ones that are on an iPad device. And the same thing, you can define the list of pages as well too that will be on there. And it, like it says here, 40 pages maximum are allowed. Next we have the app notifications here. So with app notifications, you can simply turn on or off notifications for certain applications on the device. This is again, like it shows up top here, supported in 9.3 iOS devices or later. And it's also automated device enrollment only as far as the enrollment method. So you can upload here the bundle ID, app name, publisher, and decide whether or not you want to publish notifications. This is, again, pretty granular to the business and would be something that you would have to look at on an individual basis. This may be something where you just want certain apps to have notifications for co corporate specific uh, notifications that might go to that user. Uh, lock screen message, this one's cooler in the case of a lost or stolen device that is company owned. So you could say here, you know, if lost return to like they suggest, or you could put something in here like the company name. 
and the support number so you know something like that so they if somebody does pick up this device when it is locked uh, they have a number to call to try to report that and additionally here you can put in asset tag information like the serial number of the device itself and they do allow you to put in these double brackets and type in serial number altogether so that it can dynamically populate that this way if a user does lose their device they'll have a serial number associated with it which is in the devices section here you can always look it up and you'll be able to know whose device it is if it is called in there's obviously more for a larger environment where you have a lot of users but it could be helpful especially if it's corporate owned single sign on here I consider more of an enterprise setting for this one you're using Kerberos single sign on for certain applications or websites that you may have I consider it an enterprise because it's usually proprietary developed applications uh, that you're configuring here and you can configure certain of these settings or attributes here as the principal name method and you can configure the URL prefixes here or the app bundle ID and app name typically this is just for proprietary internal applications or corporate websites that you want to use Kerberos authentication for we have content filter here you can choose a filter type so you can configure URLs or specific websites only and I'll explain what these mean again this is only for automated device enrollment not BYOD but here you're saying if you're configuring URLs you're saying permitted URLs this is only whitelisting against Apple's web filter so it's not exactly whitelisting this completely it's not a whitelisted list just white whitelisting against Apple's uh, web web filter there and the blocked URLs is actually blacklisting them so that they can't go there and they get a messaging around there your company doesn't allow you access to this website if you want to whitelist specific URLs without just saying that they're permitted then you would go to specific websites only and you can narrow this down into a unique list of app or websites that they can only go to so this is probably better on a kiosk level device or an iPad where you're saying you know you only have one website to go to to access this application maybe that you're using to gather CRM data or it's a it's an asset lead tool that you would use at a conference or something like that but you have the ability here to say these are the only websites that you can go to on this particular device and it bookmarks them so you don't have to worry about typing them in or anything either so it's a little confusing that the fact that it's saying permitted here but just know it's only whitelisting it's Apple not just whitelisting and no other applications are uh, or websites are available the next one here is a cooler one and this is again the other setting that is available for BYOD devices and like it's saying there it's available on iOS 13.0 or later as far as the OS version it's for all enrollment types here but it does allow you to have single sign-on access into everything that you have configured with Azure Active Directory authentication as that method this could be obviously just the Microsoft applications of which are on the device which I'll show you here after we get done with the settings but additionally if you configured applications in Microsoft Azure Active Directory for single sign-on via OAuth authentication or SAML based authentication um, and they're using Active Directory credentials to sign in then they would be able to do the same uh, with this as well too so you want to keep this as Microsoft Azure AD you have these other methods here which I'm not really going to cover because this is probably going to be me the most common one that I would see shared device uh, mode is really if you're using it as a kiosk device uh, shared computer activation is common to pair with this in the sense of having one login uh, for multiple activations um, or multiple logins I should say for the activation and then you can configure additional uh, key value pairs as well here too uh, that you want to do and this is more so if you want to get really granular with the applications that you're you're setting up there so at the minimum you would want to turn this on just for the Microsoft applications so you can have single sign-on and they don't have to sign on to teams for instance when they're uh, they've logged into the device as BYOD and they've installed those apps as well lastly here we have wallpaper very straightforward you're uploading an image they give you the parameters there as far as the max file size and file type again this is for automated device enrollment only so typically only corporate owned devices 
and you can select if it's on the lock screen, home screen, or both. Very straightforward, and you can just upload your image there that you want, and I put that as an example. So that's all the settings there that I wanted to show you guys. Whenever you do this, the last thing you'll need to do is just assign it to either individual groups or all users, all devices like I've done here. Typically, you want to silo this, obviously, in the sense of your organization knowing, you know, if you're going to support BYOD iOS devices in an MDM sense or if you're going to only support corporate-owned devices for MDM. Otherwise, you may want to start just tagging users who are enrolling their devices here uh, that are part of that and group them accordingly so that you can separate this out and not have to do all users or all devices because otherwise it gets kind of messy in the sense where you're applying it to everybody but it's just going to show up as uh, not applicable to the devices and, and users who don't have an iOS device. So it's a good practice to do something different. I just do it for the sake of ease here and showing you guys what this actually looks like. So with that, let's pop back over to the iOS device and show you what it looks like after enrollment and getting onto a Teams application. Okay, so we're on an iOS device here and I'm going to go ahead and open up Teams. I just recently installed it or I pushed it out with the application section of Intune so that it automatically installs on the device and this is it booting up for the first time. Typically you would only see the one profile there because they're using the corporate uh, application. I've just been testing with multiple profiles. That's why you see multiple. This is somebody who has a BYOD device and has enrolled their device via the company portal app and it's simply going through and, and making sure they have access. It's telling them it's protecting their data as well too. That's an app protection policy that I set up as well and that's more powerful in the sense of data protection but you'll see here you have to put in a pin in order for that to confirm and I'll link that video below here so you understand how these settings are coming up but basically I just wanted to show here I'm going through the the wizard and I'm immediately signed in with my Active Directory credentials here so that just shows the single sign-on experience and everything that I wanted to show with that so back here in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, the last thing I wanted to show is with iOS devices, if you go and you click on the phone that's enrolled and you click on Device Configuration, this is where you'll see with the statuses if they failed or succeeded at that individual unique setting level. So this is where it's showing not applicable because I, I pushed out some settings there in the sense of looking at the wallpaper and filter type for the websites that weren't applicable. Uh, so the single sign-on doesn't appear to show up here in the sense of being able to push that out or, or showing me pushing that out. But otherwise, you could see you know the state of which these are in and see if they've succeeded or not. So with restrictions here, which I'll do in another video, you'll see if it's not applicable or if it's succeeded or failed status or pending status in the case of a password, right, if they have to change that to a more complex password that you've set. So that's everything I want to show in this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content, specifically MSP-focused for Microsoft and Microsoft Intune. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.